Paul Boga from the Real to Real Film Festival here in Winnipeg is with us this morning. Paul, it's the 12th annual Winnipeg Real to Real Film Festival, but I'm guessing uh, this year and last year, nothing like you've ever experienced since you started this 12 years ago. Yeah, it, it's very, it, the last couple of years are a very unique way to do it, but it also is an opportunity because we're able to reach people that otherwise wouldn't be able to come to the festival. So people, not just across Canada, but into the States, into Europe, people as far as Africa and even Australia and New Zealand have been taking part in the festival. So earlier this week, it officially opened up. Uh, tell us how it's working this year. It's kind of like our own Netflix here from exactly. Winnipeg. That's right. So the film festival is live until March 15th. So we've extended it this year and it's uh, all online. And so people just go on to winnipegfilmfestival.com and uh, we feature 45 cool, clean and compelling films from around the world. It blew me away. 45 films. What also blew me away is ten dollars ten dollars mm -hmm. for 45 films how do you how do you keep the price so low if you're showing all these films yeah so one of the things you really wanted to do was to make sure that the festival is accessible to anybody who wanted to watch it so there is an option for people who want to give more that's certainly very much appreciated but not required because we wanted to make sure that in this entertainment age we wanted to be a platform where people could see fantastic films that wasn't going to break the budget and then have a family or an experience either by yourself or other people where you can share great stuff without having to, to spend too much money. And it's really amazing. Like you said, it's running for three weeks. So like maybe you don't have time to watch a film every night if you got kids and stuff. But think about like you could have movie marathons all weekend for the next <laughs> couple of weekends, right? Sure. And the great thing about it, too, is that in compare with the on in-person festival, the online one lets you watch whenever you want and as often as you want. And so sometimes uh -huh. in person, there's only so many slots and you can't fill all the films you want to see into those slots. So this is yeah. a cool way to do it. And it's also a cool way if you have friends who maybe um, don't know much about the Lord or don't have, like there's both Christian films and clean secular films that we show. So it's a pretty cool way to say, hey, you know, I saw this film in the festival. Do you want to come over and check it out? Or here's the link. You can go and watch it and just see it. So it's a fun way to, to, to share Christ with people. What are, what are some of the films that stand out for you this year? What are you excited about? Yeah, I mean, that that's always the great challenge, right? Because there's so many great films that are out there. I do love Sabina. That's the story of Richard Wormbrand's wife. And so Richard Wormbrand, of course, was the person who started Voice of the Martyrs. And that's an absolutely fascinating film. But what does it mean to love your enemies? She, she mm. does such an incredible job in the film of in the face of so much difficulty and challenge. How do you love somebody? And I think actually, ironically, a very fitting film considering what's happening in Eastern Europe right now, right? Yeah. Uh, I also think the film uh, Ends of the Earth. This is an incredible documentary about the Mission Aviation Fellowship pilots. And I mean, these people are really the Indiana Joneses of missionaries. What right? they do, it <laughs> is like when you see what it's like a day in the life of what they do. I mean, it just it feels like it's Indiana Jones. It's so impactful and how they love the Lord and risk their lives to share the gospel. It's it's truly incredible. Ends of the Earth, that one's called? Ends of the Earth, right. Okay, that's that's the first one on my list. I might actually watch it this afternoon. I end work kind of early before everybody okay. else, right? So I'll cool. sneak in a movie before I get the kids from daycare. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and like you mentioned, like a great way to just invite friends over, you know, restrictions are loosening, we can do things a little more safely now, have some mm. friends over, host a movie time. One of the things I always loved about the in-person festival was we didn't just watch films, mm -hmm. but then we had those discussions afterwards as well, right? Exactly. And so one of the things that we did with this year's festival is that we have pre-recorded conversations with the filmmakers. So for a lot of the feature documentaries and for the feature films, what we do is we had the directors come on beforehand, record an interview. So if you want to see an interview with the director, you can watch it after you finish watching the film so you'll see what their thoughts are on it. And then, of course, if you have questions, you can always email the festival and ask questions and we can see if we can track down the director and get the answers for you. That's so cool. Yeah. And all your contact info is it's all over the website. Tell us again about the website and sure. how people can log in and uh, get signed up for this. Sure. So it's winnipegfilmfestival.com and it's uh, online until March the 15th and you can register for a pass and then just click on and you can watch all the films. 
Perfect. And uh, we will see you in person next year, Paul. I really yes. hope so. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we were hoping this year would be it. But and a big thanks to CHPN. You guys have been a big help to us for many, many years. So blessings to you guys, Mike, and everyone there. Yeah, you as well and everybody at the festival. It's such a great initiative. And trust me, you will not be disappointed. You can check it all out. Again, we'll have the details up on our website too, chvnradio.com.